I have to confess something. I don't really like chocolate. Okay, maybe that's too strong of a sentence. Let me rephrase. I'm very picky when it comes to chocolate. To be fair, I like brownies and hot chocolate, but that's really as far as I go. And it kind of sucks, you know? Everybody loves chocolate, and I always feel kind of left out that I don't really care for it too much. But there is one place in the world, one country, that is always a safe bet for me. One place where I will always like the chocolate. And that country is Belgium. There's something about Belgian chocolate that just makes it a perfect balance of rich, sweet, and bitterness that I think makes it the best chocolate in the world. And it's not just me, you know, like this country has 2,000 independent chocolatiers. It's got the largest chocolate factory in the world, and it's an industry that's worth about $4 billion. So yeah, chocolate is something this country takes very seriously. So today I want to find out why Belgian chocolate is so good and famous, and just explore all the chocolate this country has to offer. It's uh, just a statue of a little boy pissing. Yeah, um, I have no idea why this thing is so popular. That is actually like the worst tourist attraction I've ever seen in my life. So, I'm in Brussels right now with one of my friends, Alice. You actually work at one of the best chocolate shops in yeah, Belgium. Yeah, legit, one of the best ones. So she knows chocolate a lot and she's gonna show me some chocolate around Brussels. And yeah, where are we going? So uh, right now in, we're in the Galerie de la Reine, mm -hmm. which is one of the oldest covered shopping streets that you can find in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And in there, there's a few different chocolate shops, mm -hmm. including the one I work at. So we can start with whichever. Yeah, okay, yeah. sure, let's go. Hello, nice to meet you. Oh, merci. That's vanilla. Okay, vanilla. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, this is amazing. He makes his own chocolate from scratch. So he goes and gets uh, the cocoa beans from all around the world, like different parts. And then he does the whole process at the uh, factory here in Brussels. So he extracts the whole cocoa from the bean, then do what's called the conchage in French. Yeah, it's mainly this whole process of like taking the cocoa beans from a few different places and then preparing from scratch. That makes the chocolate then so special and so good. Okay, so this is white chocolate with vanilla? Yes. Okay. That's so good. That's really, really rich. Wow. It's, the sweetness feels really, really natural too. All right, so what was the name of that shop actually? Uh, so that shop was Pierre Marcolini. Mm -hmm. So that's the name of the person who founded the brand and the chocolate. Yeah. Uh, he's from Belgium, Charleroi actually. It's not a town that you would expect one of the best chocolates maker mm -hmm. to be from, but he was so passionate, like he started from his garage and yeah. everything. It's a true like success story. Yeah, that's, I know like Brussels or in Belgium at mm -hmm. least, like the whole chocolate industry, there's so many like dynasty families. Yes, yeah, it's mainly that. So chocolate was originally brought to Belgium via Spain. Spain had occupied Belgium at one point, and this was around the same time where the Spanish discovered how to make chocolate from cocoa beans in their colonies in Latin America. So the Spanish brought chocolate back to Europe and sold it at really high prices. It was basically a luxury item at this time, and people in Belgium, or at least the upper class, fell in love with it. So chocolate was already really popular from the start, but it was also really expensive. You see, unlike Spain or other European powers at this point, Belgium didn't have a colony that could properly grow cocoa beans. If you want to grow cocoa beans, you need a place that's humid, has a lot of rain, has a lot of nitrogen-rich soil, and isn't too windy. Belgium didn't really have a place like this, at least not until the 1800s. This guy, King Leopold II, had just taken control of the Congo. He called it the Congo Free State. It wasn't free. And by the way, this wasn't like a colony of Belgium. This was a piece of land privately owned by King Leopold II himself. Like this was his Disney World. It was a colony that belonged to just one man, 
It's hard to continue without acknowledging that Belgian activity in the Congo is likely some of the worst commitment of colonization in Africa by any European power. So much that it's too gruesome to really mention in this video, but I really suggest looking up what happened in the Congo Free State. Okay, so Belgium, or this guy, finally now had a piece of land that could grow cocoa beans. And they went crazy with it. Belgians started making more chocolate than anywhere else in the world at the time. And they started developing these new different techniques or specific machinery designed for mixing chocolate at different textures. But the biggest game changer to chocolate in Belgium is probably what's called a praline. Alright, so I'm in Belgium, and one of the places I've always wanted to come to in this country is Bruges. And I have to say, it doesn't disappoint. So what is a pradine? Well, it's a technique of chocolate production developed by John Newhouse. He came from an Italian family that moved to Switzerland. And in Switzerland, he tried to become a doctor, but failed twice because he was really bad with blood. After he failed to become a doctor, he came here to Brussels and opened up a pharmacy so he could still help people. And his pharmacy was pretty special. To get his customers to enjoy their medicine more, he started covering their medicine with chocolate. He didn't intend for it, but Newhouse's idea of coating things in chocolate was revolutionary. So his grandson, John Newhouse Jr., replaced the medicine filling and covered chocolate in more sweet and tasty stuff instead. And the praline has now become one of the basis for Belgian chocolate. And it's a pretty charming story because now the Newhouse family has become a chocolate dynasty in Belgium. And they're still around today with shops all across Brussels. So this is Newhouse. Let's try this one out. So Newhouse, the one who invented the pralines, mm -hmm. actually. Mm. This is hazelnut caramel? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really rich. That's super heavy. Wow. It's heavy, but also this chocolate, the pralines, are known to be on the heavier side. Mm -hmm. But you see, in those chocolates, mm -hmm. what you're going to enjoy is not going to be chocolate that's on the outside. It's what's inside that matters. Yeah, because that's what the whole pralines is all about, right? Yeah. You're not going to taste a very good chocolate on the outside mm -hmm. because there is something much more interesting that they want to showcase on the inside. Yeah, okay, so Newhouse is all about what's in the inside. I guess since they're more about pralines. Yeah, but the praline isn't the only reason why Belgian chocolate is so good and famous. Belgian chocolate also uses 100% cocoa butter, which apparently is actually not that common. It's what makes Belgian chocolate so much more rich and also more healthier than most other chocolates. Belgium is also one of the very few countries in the world that offers years of higher education for chocolate production. Chocolate production is something that this country takes really seriously and it's something it's really proud of. So it has a sense of responsibility to uphold an image of quality chocolate. Sweet or bitter, dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Uh, in between? Like a balance? In between. Oh, so for example, this one is very diplomatic. Mm -hmm. It's our king's favorite chocolate. Oh, I'd love to have that. Sure. Yeah. So this chocolate is the king's favorite chocolate in Belgium. The king of Belgium's favorite chocolate from Mary's. Let's... According to... According to the woman selling it to us, but it's named after the king, so mm. let's see. This one's okay. It's more like a high quality Snickers bar. <laughs> that that actually talks to me. It's good, but mm. like I would say compared to the ones that we had in New House. Mm. At least this one, like, it's really good and I really like it. But I wouldn't say it's as good as New House. Yeah. Or um Macolini mm. so far. Grams is three euros. A kilo is thirty euros. In comparison, like a um, hundred gram at Marcolini is seventeen fifty, and a kilo at No House is eighty-eight euros. So you see, it's always a bit different. So this is Leonidas. 
good chocolate for the price. Yeah. yeah. And this is also the largest one. Yeah. Yeah, this is Leonidas and uh, it's melting in my finger, so let me try to yeah. eat this fast. You see just the fact that you cannot take one bite mm -hmm. of it? It's something that is a bit of a shame for me. Because mm. then you cannot enjoy all of the flavors at the same time. This one is harsh after the one you just had. It's not bad. No, it's not. It's, it's good chocolate. Yeah, but it's just... I would say this is like my least favorite mm. one out of all of them. But that doesn't mean that it's not bad. Like this is, this is so much better than Hershey's. <laughs> I honestly feel like I'm in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory right yeah. now. Yeah, imagine how I feel every day at work. Yeah. It's really yeah. hard to just take yeah. everything and just yeah. eat it all I, the time. I know, there's just so much chocolate and it looks yes. so good. And this is coming yeah. from like someone who's like mm. not like a huge chocolate person. I know, but we get that a lot. Like yeah. the people who are used to chocolate, especially in the US, mm -hmm. you guys are used to chocolate which are very sweet, yeah. and very heavy. Oh, for sure. But here the chocolate is treated a bit like it's high fashion, but for chocolates. No, you yeah. Know, it's, like it's high chocolatey. <laughs> because chocolate has to be made at a very high standard here, there are a lot of independent shops that make and sell their own chocolate. About like 2,000 of them. Chocolatiers in Belgium are like bakeries in France. Of course, Belgium isn't the only country that takes chocolate seriously. They often have to compete with other countries to keep their chocolate top tier, most notably Switzerland. Maybe like the only other country I can imagine that would compete with Belgium is Switzerland? Switzerland's chocolate is actually really interesting because when Belgium was really focusing on what is inside the chocolate. Switzerland, which is a country that has a lot of cows, a lot of milk, was uh, mixing the chocolate with the milk, creating like chocolate milk. There's this big debate, whereas is Switzerland chocolate or Belgian chocolate the best? But it's, it's a different type of expectation, a different type of chocolate. So I wouldn't say that you can just say, oh, this one is best or that one is best. It's yeah. really like, depends how people like their chocolate. So yeah, that's Belgium chocolate. And coming from, again, someone who's not a big chocolate fan, it's pretty cool to see a country dedicate so much of itself to the world's favorite candy. So now we're gonna eat the best chocolate in Belgium, maybe? maybe? In my opinion. Okay. There's two types. Mm -hmm. So you have the Pierre Marcolini. I don't know if you can see. It's, it. Oh yeah, it's written, it's like imprinted on yeah. like a watermark. The Pierre Marcolini is a mix of a few different origins and it's dark chocolate with mm -hmm. dark chocolate ganache. And then I also chose the Madagascar okay. because Madagascar is the softest, mm -hmm. softest of the dark chocolate. Okay, so this is the Madagascar, it's a softer dark chocolate. So the cocoa beans come from Madagascar. Mm -hmm. Like they've, mm. they've been ordered from there mm -hmm. and then they're being refined and mm, worked. This is so good. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> this is what I think about when, when I think of Belgian chocolate. Mm. It's dark chocolate, which is known for being bitter. Mm -hmm. But it's so sweet. But it's not like the flavor of sugar or like corn syrup or anything like that. It's not like a sweetener. Yeah, it's oh, just... like cocoa butter. It's cocoa butter. Wow. This one will be more bitter. This is but more bitter. you can enjoy the difference. Okay, yeah. Mm. You see, this one is more bitter. Honestly, I don't think it's even that bitter. Really? I don't think it's bitter at all. It almost tastes like there's like... Like a fruit in there. It's like almost mm. fruity. It's weird. <laughs> like, I'm not even... I don't even know what to like... How to describe it. Because <laughs> that's not what I expected when I was eating dark chocolate. It's just dark chocolate with dark chocolate ganache inside. Wow. I don't... No added things. I don't know why other dark chocolate are so bitter compared to that then. What's really interesting about Belgium is that, like here, we took brand names. Like there are people who have started something and then made it a legacy. Yeah. Whether it's long time like New House or recent like uh, Marcolini. Mm -hmm. But then apart from that, there's like tiny creators, like almost as in fashion, there's tiny yeah. creators of chocolate that has like one shop here, one shop there. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. Oh yeah. Because there's such a passion for chocolate in the country. It's really nice. 